has been a hot minute since we've done this. You're going to have to take back that chair, dear. Uh, absolutely not, Geordie. There's no other chair that even comes close to the standards I require, nor one which best exemplifies who I am as a person. Who you are as a Vorimal, you mean? Yeah. Thanks for the reminder. How's it all going, by the way? <sighs> not much to report, unfortunately. My kind is still subject to the firm. There's still no sign of firmum or potence. There's something that's been bothering me, though. Hmm? I've been studying the mining conglomerates of this planet profusely, and none of the gases they mine seem to share any properties with Cratulite. Which makes me wonder why the Phantom sent us here, if not to fulfil our duty. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Anyway, we're going back to our roots. We are. Book reviews. What's on the agenda today? Uh, today we have the Atlas 6 by... I'm going to butcher this name. Olivi? Olivi? Olivi. Olivi. Six candidates are recruited by the mysterious Atlas Blakely and are told they must spend one year together to qualify for initiation into a secret society of magical academicians, the best in the world. During this time, they'll be permitted access to the society's archives and judged on their contributions to arcane areas of knowledge. Five, they are told, will be initiated. One will be eliminated. If they can prove themselves to be the best, they will survive. Most of them. What did you think? You first. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Me too. And there you have it, guys. No, like we're not that rusty. Uh, look, I thought it was strong on a lot of storytelling fronts I'd consider important, namely the characters and the mystery. And perhaps not so much on the elements we care less for. I think if you crossed Misfits and, like, maybe Big Brother, you might get something that resembles this book. Misfits is a little more tongue-in-cheek, though. I think she wants to dance with you. Oh, that's nice. Now, The Atlas Six is considered dark academia, so to give the author the benefit of the doubt with this review, I think it's fair to point out some of the tropes one would expect from a book of this genre, and that's higher education, writing, poetry and the arts, and finally some gothic elements and architecture. And the Atlas VI, if nothing else, is chock full of these. Firstly, the magic. If you're into your hard science-based magic systems, then this has you written all over it. It was interesting to see how the magic worked in the corporate world, and I liked how people's power was never really limited in scope, especially when it comes to our six candidates. It was really fun to see the characters fusing their abilities to achieve some never-before-seen magic, and there was no one ability between the six of them that I felt was, you know, inadequate or unnecessary. But I felt what was most successful about this magic was that it played a major role in the relationships that developed between these characters and therefore the story overall. I've read a lot of fantasy that has some incredibly intricate and well thought out magic systems, but more often than not they feel like separate entities from the story, which sort of begs the question why the author would deem them necessary if not to cater to the genre. Next to the characters, all of whom, I must say, are incredibly well realised. Atlas chooses his candidates based on the field of magic they are worldly renowned for, and each candidate's magical specialty is very resemblant of their personalities. But there's one character in particular I must say I think shines the most, and that's Callum. The reluctant villain of this story, Callum has the power to control minds and manipulate people and his inner dialogue is simply some of the best I've read from any point of view character I've come across. Considering what this character is capable of, I never expected to have as much empathy as I do for him, but Olivier makes it so easy to understand how and why this character philosophizes the way he does. She's doing something a little unconventional with character here as Callum, who's able to have anyone do his bidding at a moment's notice, has no real aspirations or goals outside of his place at the Alexandrian Society, and in the world of writing, a character without a clear goal is usually frowned upon. But because Callum knows there can be no thrill in the chase for him due to his power, because this is factored into his inner dialogue, it strengthens who he is as a character. Am I making sense? I don't know why you're asking now. Alright, finally, I just need to mention how well Olivy kept my attention with the amount of mystery that's presented in this book. Like, what's the significance of Tristan's power for the society? Who's this Gideon character and what's his deal? What's this Alexandrian society all about, and what do they mean by elimination? Oh shit, and the prose. 
top notch in terms of grammar. I couldn't find an error among those 500 odd pages. Right, what weren't you a fan of? Well, like we said earlier, all the things I didn't like about the book aren't really issues we care too much about. Regardless, I'll begin with plot. We weren't kidding when we said this is a bit like Big Brother. The bulk of this book is six candidates sitting around psychoanalyzing and f***ing each other, forming factions, and philosophizing over life in general. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I just feel this needs to be mentioned for those like us who prefer to consume their stories without any idea of what to expect. Next order of business is Olivier's writing style. For the most part, it's clear and concise, and as a reader, I skipped through those pages at a rate I was very comfortable with. But I felt somewhat blindsided every time there was a scene change, because they jump out at you so unexpectedly. One minute our point of view character is having a conversation with one character, then another the next, and for the life of you, you don't remember how you got from one place to the other. As I mentioned earlier, the bulk of this book does consist of our six characters just interacting with each other, so this isn't a big deal for the most part, but it does become so when there's significant changes in the plot. Speaking of which, there were a couple of plot-based decisions that were difficult for us to buy, but I'm jumping into some spoiler territory here. So if you're at this point and you're considering the Atlas 6 as a potential read, time to click off, buddy. The first red herring of this book comes from that CIA raid or whatever it was. Very quickly, our candidates are thrown into a life and death situation where they're forced to work together in order to neutralize a threat from a military task force. I found this whole scene so difficult to buy. If there was some mention of our candidates having combat experience, I might have had an easier time with it. But at the end of the day, it's a bunch of youths and undergrads killing highly trained operatives, and some are even getting a kick out of it all. It also feels a bit out of place with the rest of the book. We're reminded in a scene down the line that the candidates, being responsible for the society's defences, have used their powers to set up a magical barrier around the society. But these moments seem like band-aids over what are gaping wounds in the narrative. Another band-aid example is towards the end, when it comes to light that this elimination process everyone is so mystified by, turns out to mean the death of one candidate, decided by the others. From here, I fail to see why anyone would want to continue, why anyone believed initiation into this society was worth risking a 1 in 6 chance of death, let alone being complicit in a murder. How does the justice system work in this world? Is the Alexandrian society above the law or something? It's strange, Olivier is aware of these inconsistencies and does draw attention to them in the narrative, but again, they're like band-aids over gaping wounds. Here's what I feel. At its core, this is a narrative that wants to indulge in the tropes of its genre, with a CIA battle and elimination plot points slapped on in order to have a coherent story. And I just wonder if there was any other way to go about it, because when it's just these characters interacting with each other, having their poetic and philosophical conversations, the Atlas Six thrives. Lastly, I just gotta bring some attention to the irony of Parisa being so often referred to as the prettiest one, because they're all ridiculously good looking. Hey, look at that. End of the review. Thank you all for sticking around. The hell are we doing next time, Jordy? Next time? You know what, Ink? Maybe next time we should have our first uh, Just Ink <gasps> segment? You mean it? Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, so make sure you stick around, guys, because Ink is going to share with us some thoughts he's had on story titles. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you all next time. <laughs>